providing you with the knowledge to land yourself in an extremely uncomfortable conversation at a party with a very opinionated acquaintance. We now present Elevated Airborne Beta Levels in Pacific West Coast U.S. States and Trends in Hypothyroidism Among Newborns After the Fukushima Nuclear Meltdowns Various reports indicate the incidence of congenital hypothyroidism is increasing in developed nations. Large amounts of fallout disseminated worldwide from the meltdowns of four reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi plant in Japan, including radioiodine isotopes just days after the meltdowns. Iodine-131, an airborne gross beta was documented in the five U.S. states on the Pacific Ocean. The number of congenital hypothyroid cases in these five states from March 17 to December 31st was 16% greater than the same period in 2010. 28% plus occurred in the period of March 17 through June 30th. Further analysis in the U.S. and other nations is needed for better understanding and association between iodine exposure from Fukushima Daiichi and congenital hypothyroidism risk. Mr. Dorman, Mike, this is Dan. No, no, we're not planning any press release with this information. This was just a projection that we were requesting to run. Separate from our being requested to run that, we got this from the Department of Energy briefing package that had this other Detria run into it. And we're not. I don't know what prompted theirs on all their assumptions that went into theirs, but it's obviously caught our attention, and we're looking to get what we think would be more realistic projections. Any other questions? Ms. Howe. Dan, just one comment. And Rob, this is Linda Howe in Region 5. Rob? I can talk with you offline about some background information for California. The DITRA and Department of Energy runs for California may have been prompted by queries from the state because the state has been conducting interagency conference calls and DOE, Environmental Protection Agency, has been part of those calls. Our regional state liaison officer is also monitoring that, but there is some background that is politically sensitive that I can share with you offline. This is Dave Weller from the Nuclear Regulatory Team. The other supposition had looking at those is there a potential that is the core is in a dry pool or in a dry area. It is interacting with concrete and other materials. And you can be seeing some interaction there that generates a little bit of smoke. And that might be what we're seeing, Mr. Weber. Yeah, there's where the gases would come off of when the core hits the concrete. Virgilio. All right, guys, that's all. Just that you're aware. Dan Dorman. The other, the other piece of the factor into that is there's also blank, blank again, EPA, NRC, shooting blanks again at us. Bill Borchardt. Okay, Mr. Wiggins. And that was the last we heard, Borchardt. Okay, well, I'll keep trying. I'll send him an email. I'll CC you on your personal email. I mean your work. But under your name. Wiggins. Yeah, my name. That's what I'm... That's why I'm monitoring. Borshar. Okay. Wiggins. Alright. But I'll just tell you. We're filling every email for you know. Potential later FOIA. Borshar. Yes, yes. Wiggins. You know that. Borshar. Yep, absolutely. Wiggins. All right, bye. Unknown participant. Well, well, what we will do is we'll have, after this call, we got to provide certain information on you on our line. We'll do that afterwards, Charlie. Miller. Not on a recorded line. Unknown participant. Yeah, and then we'll send an email down to get you on that list. Mr. Miller. All right. So you just give me a call back on a non-recorded line, and I can give you that info. Back to shooting blanks. Chairman Jasco. Okay. Religio. Information to you, Chairman, at the meeting. Jasco. Marty. I'm not on a classified line. Virgilio. Right. I understand. Subject line. NRC is responding to an emergency outside of the United States. This is not a drill. The NRC and other federal agencies are closely following an emergency occurring outside of the United States. 
Two important reminders. It is possible that some of us will be requested by colleagues in another country to provide technical advice and assistance during this emergency. It is essential that all such communications be handled through the NRC Operations Center. Any assistance to a foreign government or entity must be coordinated through the NRC Operations Center. This is not a drill. Japan Nuclear Event Status, March 24th of 2011. This is the DE All Hands on Deck meeting. Disclaimer! Only public information is provided in this presentation. Non-public information will not be discussed. Information will likely change as more details are obtained. And be sure not to have any sensitive information being discussed in this forum. Sensitive internal information attached. Talking points. Here are the talking points. They are not approved for sharing with the states, except orally. The public portions only, please. Must keep this under wraps. Attached is official use only. Only use public portion as talking points and do not forward. Note that the states are receiving NRC press releases. You should be able to access those via BlackBerry. Note the OPA is referring questions about monitoring to EPA. The NRC EPA has indicated that if there is a release, they will assume their role as a lead agency under the National Response Framework. Keep to the talking points. This is from the NRR Questions and Answers Database. Importance high. Lots of good questions and lots of poor answers. For your information, a good database for questions and answers is for the Fukushima events. Up and running and populated with the OPA approved questions and answers. EDO may announce in an EDO update. Content control maintained by DORL. Link below. Okay guys, here's the basic earthquake talking points. Per Diane's request below are just some generic seismic talking points. Scott and I, Lara Victor, will be producing more specific talking points shortly. Nuclear power plants are built to withstand environmental hazards, including earthquakes. Even those plants that are located outside of areas with extensive seismic activity are designed for safety in the events such as a natural disaster. The NRC requires that safety significant structures, systems, and components be designed to take into account the most severe natural phenomena historically reported for the site and surrounding area. The NRC then adds a margin for error to account for the historical data's limited accuracy and in their words the licensing bases for existing nuclear power plants are based on historical data from the area's maximum credible earthquake with an additional margin included. Should people in Japan take KI? Here's the public answer. The Japanese people should listen to the public authorities in Japan regarding the protective actions of KI potassium iodine. It is one of the protective measures that might be taken in radiological emergencies in this country. We do not know if this measure is necessary or appropriate in this Japanese situation. Additional technical non-public information. There are a range of protective measures that we use. The most effective is evacuation. Government officials are responsible for determining the best means to protect their public. KI is another measure for protection, but evacuation and sheltering are the primary means that are used. So they have a public answer and a non-public answer. Subject line, possible request for KI. Thanks, Elmo. We had provided a stash of KI for Chuck to carry along with him. But he inadvertently left in his office. I ask our guy Steve to interface with yours and share as much as we can. Chuck Castro had a layover here in Texas on his way to Japan in the hurriedness of getting on that plane. He found that he might not have been equipped as needed to be, especially without his KI. So Region 5 gave all of our KI 53 packets to Chuck for use in Japan. So Region 5 finds itself without any immediate stash of KI for use if we had to send a site team. Needless to say, given the high demand for KI, it is difficult to purchase on the open market. Your staff will likely be contacted to see if we can bag, borrow, or even steal some packets of KI 
in order to equip a site team. Thank you for your cooperation and generosity. So they told the public, no, it's not necessarily needed for KI, and they're running, begging to get it. Stealing! They'll steal the KI to get it. That's how bad they want it. Now here's some more talking points. They have a public answer and a non-public answer. What happens when a plant melts down? Here's the public answer, guys. In short, nuclear power plants in the United States are designed to be safe. Totally. And to prevent the release of radioactive material. There are multiple barriers between those radioactive materials and the environment, including the fuel cladding and that heavy steel reactor vessel itself and the containment building. Usually it's heavily reinforced structure of concrete and steel several feet thick. Here's some additional technical non-public information. The melted core may melt through the bottom of that vessel and flow onto the concrete containment floor. The core may melt through the containment liner and release radioactive material to the environment. Some more serious questions. Hey, will this incident affect new reactor licensing? Well, here's a public answer. It is not appropriate for you to hypothesize on such future scenarios at this point. However, let me give you the non-public technical information. This event could potentially call into question the NRC's seismic requirements, which could require the staff to reevaluate the staff's approval of the AP1000 and the ES boiling water reactor design and certifications. Holy crap, we can't have that happen, guys. No. Shh. Fuku. Shh. Periods of long rainfall can cause the groundwater elevation to rise, which can cause structures such as deeply embedded tanks to fail due to buoyancy. Are nuclear power plants designed to withstand this effect? Well, yes, our worst case groundwater levels are estimated for each site and the effects of these levels are considered in the design of the plant to ensure the plant remains safe under these conditions. This may need some additional work from our groundwater staff, though. But what about droughts and conditions which lead to low water? Are these even considered? Well, yes, our impacts to the plant from lower water conditions brought about by the ice effects downstream, dam breach, and channel diversions away from that site are reviewed as well to ensure the plant remains safe under these scenarios. And then we have a deleted scenario. What about the periods of long rainfall can cause the groundwater elevation to rise which can cause structures such as deeply embedded tanks to fail due to buoyancy or nuclear power plants designed to withstand this effect? Yes, the worst case groundwater levels are estimated for each site and the impacts of these levels are considered in the design of the plant to ensure the plant remains under these safe conditions. And then we have a deletion, deletion, we have another deletion that was important to safety, another deletion that was considered, another deletion of adverse effects of the groundwater on the plant foundations, and important to safety are determined of the characterized during the safety. So, many of those talking points got cut down and deleted. Here's some groundwater questions about our nuclear power plant safety. Periods of long rainfall can cause the groundwater elevation to rise, which can cause structures such as deeply embedded tanks to fail due to buoyancy. Are nuclear power plants designed to withstand this effect? Well, the groundwater buoyancy effects are considered in the design of nuclear power plants. These effects are well known and are generally considered in all the designs and structures to be installed underground or that have underground components. Generally speaking, the design of nuclear power plants must consider extreme natural phenomena, including high groundwater conditions that might endanger the safe operation of the plant. The basis for this design considerations is given on the 10 CFR 50 Appendix A General Design Criterion 2. Unknown Participant Okay, I had a question, I guess. I was still on mute when I asked the question. Virgilio? Go ahead. Gregory? Earlier there was some discussion about coordinating with the Environmental Protection Agency and the Protective Measures Team about some talking points in case the states have any questions. Has that work been done? Virgilio? Yes. Gregory? It has, okay. Alright. Thank you. Come again. I mean, what the hell is wrong with these people? Click here. Subscribe! Subscribe!